So I grew up in Tamaki Makoto in Auckland. I studied Fine Arts at Elam, School of Fine Arts, finished in 2010 and in 2014 I moved to Frankfurt, studied there for two years and have been living in Berlin since. This year has obviously led to a few changes. Now we're ending up here in New Zealand again as a result of COVID and it's been a great opportunity for me to be able to develop a show specifically for New Zealand. There were a range of factors. My family was, is all quite creative, my mother and father and my sister. I started studying photography in high school and I just, I loved the darkroom process. I mean, that was an incredible space and just being able to see this kind of image appear magically on a piece of paper, you know, it was a, it was a really kind of transformative experience. I actually wanted to be a swimmer around that time, but maybe I realized that there was a lot more interesting things going on within art than kind of going up and down a pool. How do you overcome artist block? I think sleeping. <laughs> There's a passage from a favorite book of mine, The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin. And I think she's, it says something like, when action grows unprofitable, gather information. When information gathering goes unprofitable, sleep. Sleep. <laughs> I mean, I think it's probably a knock on from that last answer. Probably one of the things I'd recommend and that I found really helpful was not to be in a hurry. Take your time and try to learn as much as you can. So the BMW art journey came about through a presentation at Art Basel Hong Kong. It was a short list initially and then they asked you to propose your dream journey around the world, kind of go to any locations and it entailed you conducting a kind of research project. So what I proposed was to look at the ways that people have mapped the stars from Western Europe and through the Pacific Islands and how different forms of mapping the stars have interrelated over the past kind of 500 years. You know, I think there have been concerns and interests that I had in art school in Elam when I was studying my undergraduate that have continued. I think moving to Frankfurt to study certainly marked a kind of big shift for me. I think it kind of made me reflect and understand a little bit more what it meant for me to come from New Zealand. I mean, that's a completely unending question, but it did help me to kind of see how these worlds are connected and what kind of underpins them a little bit more. I've always wanted to do something in a planetarium, but, you know, I don't know if I can really convey it right now. I think this show has been a kind of dream project. It's really wonderful to be able to see a whole diverse body of work come together. There's a kind of vocabulary here that I think is, yeah, really speaking. Every piece is kind of speaking to each other. So I think this has been a kind of totally wonderful opportunity. So the gold leaf on the floorboards began actually with a piece of furniture that my parents wanted to get rid of. Uh, it had been ridden with borer. It was New Zealand native. Rimu, a cabinet, and I realized that Bora was actually like an invasive species. It had been imported within the furniture that colonial settlers would bring. You know, when my parents wanted to get rid of this thing, it struck me as like a kind of document that entailed a certain history. Even the kind of most minute hole within this cabinet could be kind of a way to understand how the landscapes transformed and changed over the course of kind of 250 years. So the Birds of Paradise, this became a real point of interest for me when I learned about how these were, I guess, a first form of currency between European explorers and Papua New Guineans in the 16th century. Papuans would preserve the birds and remove their feet. This was translated in, in Europe uh, when they were studied by naturalists, examining the body of these birds and looking at, well, why do these birds have no feet? It must be that they fly perpetually in a kind of paradisal realm above the Earth's surface and only fall to the Earth when they die. On the one hand, it's a really beautiful story, but on the other hand, it's also so bound up with a kind of colonial, exotifying gaze. 
This was during lockdown. There was a kind of jigsaw puzzle out, and I realized that, you know, a lot of the die cuts are kind of universal. So you can effectively put different images of different puzzles together and form a kind of collage. I mean, I'm pretty sure this is not an original idea, but it became a really fantastic lens to think through how can we bring things together that might not normally relate. This question of being together but apart. The title comes from a Walt Whitman poem called Song of Myself, and it comes from a particular stanza where he says, do I contradict myself? Of course I do, I contain multitudes. You know, this just became a really useful way of, particularly when we've presented such a diverse body of work here, look at the contradictions between things, look at contradictions in the work, and to look at how we ourselves are contradictory.